Campbell. There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you might be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my StreamYard virtual studio with the one and only. Clark Bartram. Clark, what is up, my brother? Let's go. Jay. Yeah, I've been waiting for this moment for so long. You're so busy with so many amazing people on here. I hope I can live up to the standard that you have set in this world for what people should expect from their life. So I'm fired up. I get chills. Clark, man, I love you, bro. I'm honored and humbled. And so you guys, I mean, I don't really need to introduce this guy, but for some of you guys that are newer to the Jay Campbell podcast, and maybe you came over for the spiritual side and things, uh, Clark is literally probably the number one most uh, renowned, recognized male fitness model in history. Okay. I looked up to this dude when I was a kid. This guy's been on 100 plus magazine covers. I mean, imagine that, right? I mean, he's done a lot of other things too. I mean, he's definitely a maverick. Uh, an icon in the fitness industry. I mean, again, everybody that's anybody that's ever been in the you know, performance world, bodybuilding world, fitness world, competition world. They all know Clark Bartram. I mean, dude, I mean, again, your personality, your charisma, you know, just who you are as a being is like, I mean, dude, you light up every room that you come into. So again, it's an honor for you to come on the show. But I mean, he is also the the, the creator of Maximize Man Elite. He's got tons of supplements. I mean, the guy's, like I said, like a revolutionary in this industry. So it's an honor to have him on the show today. Uh, he's also the host of American Health and Fitness, which is seen in more than 110 million homes. But again, Clark is an absolute maverick and an icon in fitness. And we're here to talk about a lot of cool things today. But man, just give me your take right now. By the way, you guys, Clark lives very close to me. He's in um, Encinitas, not Encinitas, Escondido. Where? Escondido, my bad. I knew it started with E and S uh, or EC, but uh, he's very close to me here in Marietta, just a little bit south or uh, in San Diego. Uh, and him and I are going to get together soon. That's also long overdue. I, I'm supposed to get out and train at his gym, which I will soon. Um, but uh, what is your take right now with what is going on? Uh, you know, just in the, you, know, we, you and I were talking about the fitness space and like magazines and like how they're all literally done, right? They can't generate revenue and you know, everything is digital now. But like, where do you see all of this going? Because obviously you and I also know that like Instagram and TikTok and stuff are all also seemingly a fad. Like, wh how do you think like a young guy right now, who's somebody who looks up to guys like you and me, you know, what would you, what would be the advice that you would give them now if they want to get into the fitness space? You know, it's interesting you asked that question because I was in the gym yesterday and I love, we'll call it discovering new people or finding somebody and helping them reach their unrealized potential. So there's this kid in there. He's probably 6'2", and I was watching him squat. First thing I saw was he was on the treadmill walking. I saw these big quads, and then I noticed how handsome he was and, you know, full head of hair, and he went over and he trained, and I saw he was a trainer there. Really nice guy, too. So that was the main reason I approached him. And I said, brother, what are you doing with all of what you have right here? Like, you've been gifted with this human body, yeah. and you, what are you doing with it? He looked at me. Like he didn't know what the hell to say. And I, you know, j I told him who I was and what I did. And the girl at the front desk confirmed it. So he felt comfortable talking to me. And my advice to him was, look, you need to take the God given gift that you have and use it in a way that you're not currently using it. Training is one thing, but using it to create a revenue stream like I have for my entire yep. existence. Yep using it to encourage other people and lift them up like I'm yep. doing right now with 100%. my maximized man elite. So basically what I was suggesting to him was replicating what I'm currently doing, but 40 years back, right? Like I'm 59 now. Now this That's guy, awesome, I don't know man. how old he is. Maybe he was 20 something. So 30 years back, I'm like, look, I can show you a path. 
So if you trust me and you want to do this, I can help lead you in a direction where you can really monetize what you're doing. Because why not take advantage of these platforms? Why not get out there and, and get in on the gold rush, if you will, while it lasts and, and really be something of value to this world and get compensated for it? So that's really what I was trying to teach him and tell him how to do. So we'll see what happens if he follows through. Most people don't, but I have hope that he will. That's amazing, man. Um, so, dude, honestly, the fact that you're 59, I mean, I mean, look, you guys, he probably will take his shirt off at some point in this podcast. <laughs> But I mean, the guy looks better than 99.9% .9 of people on planet earth right now. And you guys just heard him, right? He's 59. He's actually about to do a photo shoot. Have you been dieting at all to look like that right now or no? Just normal. Uh, no, this is pretty much yeah. Life normal. Yeah. Um, but you're about to do it. You're like you said, your swan song <laughs> photo shoot for the magazines, because you don't even know if the magazine will be here in six months. And, and, and you, that's not being mean to the magazine or the owners. And you know, I'm sure they're amazing people. And I know the magazine trained, but you're right. I mean, all of them are faced with revenue uh, loss, you know, like you said, sustainability. Um, but I mean, dude, you're 59 and you look like that, you know, the average man and woman, let's just not sh sh hold them out. Uh, walking around on the streets today between 25 and 35 is obese. Yeah, I mean, statistically, and this is a data point, dude, that I just got literally four days ago. Uh, and it comes from 2019, which is scary because we know that the scandemic has made people worse. Uh, the average, the, the amount of obese people over the age of 40, male and female in the United States is 70% over the age of 40. Wow. 70%. So if you are a man or woman over the age of 40 in the United States, as of 2019, 70%, 70% are obese. Now, again, obese as defined by BMI, which you, as you and I know, BMI is also kind of, you know, not always accurate because some people who are hyper muscular, you know, are classified as obese or whatever due to their body mass index. But dude, here's the other thing that was crazy because I got this at the same time and I want you to comment on this and you know this. A lot of people get DEXA scans, right? They get bone mineral density, and then they also get body composition. The DEXA scan formulation, which always accounts for the standard mean deviation of the population dynamics, bro, it's useless now because, again, everybody's fat. So they can't even use a quantified mathematical analysis for DEXA scans because the, the average person is obese, yeah, see, that's that's a problem that I have. And I'll tell you a funny story about that. So we'll call it an algorithm or a mathematical equation that's factored in to all of these things that we're using. So years ago, I was at a big box retailer and I went in and there was one of these body mass index scales or a yep. body mass scale. Yep. And I was bored and I kicked my shoes off, put my socks off in the store yep. and I stood on it. And it said that I was 32% body fat. <laughs> right. Well, listen, so a guy walks by that works in the store and he brings up, he's like, oh, what did it say? I said, bro, these things are so wrong. So I go into my whole thing. He's like, no, it's right. I said, dude, it's not right. It's not right. So he jumps on. Now, Jay, this guy's got a belly on. Him. He of jumps course. on. It and it says that he was 26. 17. 17. Or something like that. Like substantially lower than me. And I was spinning because this guy was convinced that it worked. Of course. Like, you don't understand. There aren't enough people that look like me to factor in to the equation to give this thing a less of a curve to judge That's on. Right. That's right. That's there right. aren't enough of us that exist. Right. So this is the first problem. The second problem is that you think it's right. And, and it's because the amount of people that you see come through here exactly. look are like, like you. So right. I pulled up my shirt. I said, bro, really, pull up your shirt. You <laughs> need to tell me you honestly think you're less body fat than me? Goes, that's what it says. And he walked away. I was like, oh. He says, that's God. what it says. That's what it says. And he walked away. Unbelievable, man. That's <laughs> where we are in society, True bro. Story. True story. Yeah. And, and, and let's, let's break that down. I mean, I've talked about this before, you know, all of those devices, it was probably a Tanita scale. I mean, they're all worthless, right? Because they literally measure what are, what is called bioelectrical impotence, which is literally the water capacity of your cells. And so 
if you are fully hydrated, like guys like you and I are drinking water all the time, you get like a 20 to 30% error range. It's a scam. They're useless, fucking useless. Even by the way, the in body, which is, you know, the other one now that they have it all the great higher one. Yeah. Same thing. Now they have better math. They do have a better formulation. They do have an account for muscular athletic people like us, but it's still nonsense because I've done it and I've, te- dude, I did in body one time and tested it 6.2. And then one time I did an in body and I was as, as leaner, I was as lean or leaner than the time I tested 6.2. And it said I was 17.8 or 18 or some shit. And I'm just like, this is insane. And yet all these people, bro, and as you know, doctors are using these things in their offices, are getting these readouts from these things, and they're they're useless. And, and you know, you can comment if you want, but I mean, I always say there's two tried and true methods to measure body composition, and that is a dunk test, right? A bod pod, which is again electrostatic weighing, which you know, if, as long as the machine's not off, which I guess you could say the calibration could be off, but I mean, that's pretty close. And then you know, this from old school. A nine site, seven site, or eleven site scan dex measurement with an intelligent person that knows how to actually measure skin folds. Those two will give you a, a body fat reading. All these machines are a joke, dude. Yeah. I did. I, I had my event here with my guys from my Maximized Man program, and I had a DEXA scan pull up. And I'll tell you, I was I did an in body. And I measured at 11.8 on the in body. Yep. And I measured at 11.8 on the DEXA scan. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. They're usually about off by three to 5%, but they're close. They're close. Yeah. Well, it's they're not plus close. or minus an elephant like some of those other ones. And that's why I always say it's plus or minus an elephant, depending on when you show up. And even, even the skin dex, you, you mentioned an intelligent person doing this. You know, right. There are so many trainers in there that watch another yeah, trainer, course. grab a chunk of skin, do it. Don't do the three. You know, there's there's a certain protocol that you need to follow. And you have to have done it many, many, many times to be accurate at it. So even that, you know, I, I guess the best thing for me is just how I feel, how I look. Right. Whether, you know, and I was with Frank Zane the other day. Nice. And Frank Zane said something. He goes, just take a picture. You know, you'll see yourself in the mirror. But when you look at yourself in a photograph, if you don't like the way you look, work harder. That's, That's it. Right. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Is Frank? Frank is down there too, right? Yeah, he's in La Mesa. It's about thirty La Mesa. miles. Beautiful, yeah. man. What is Frank now? Is he in his eighties, late seventies? Eighty. Yeah. Wow, that is insane. It was great because I walked in. I go, you know, he knows me. We've known each other for years. But I reach out, you know, Mr. Zane, legend. How you doing? So he shakes my hand. First thing he does, look at my bicep. That never goes away. <laughs> he's eighteen. I'm like, oh, look at. That Mr. Three-Time Olympia is sizing up Clark Bartram. I said, what do you think, sir? He goes, you're looking pretty good. I was like, let's go. That's awesome, man. That's awesome, man. You got to introduce me to Frank. I, I have met him a couple times at some of the shows and stuff like that, but uh, that's so cool, man. What is he doing nowadays? He's just chilling. He's enjoying life. He's got a beautiful home in La Mesa. And he's got a nice little gym. He trains with his buddy. He's just... Relax. I mean, is he still is he still in shape? I mean, it's kind of got, got to be kind of hard at eighty now to keep it together like he once was. But I mean, is he still in decent shape? Relatively speaking, okay, absolutely. Okay, awesome, awesome. Okay, so let's talk about your talking points and what we really want to go down. You know, the path that you live and you personify and you embody. Um, you know, and you've got an acronym you've created, but I'm gonna let you talk it. But your first one is mindset. You know, how important is mindset in today's day and age? Yeah, so the the guys that I deal with come to me typically after the age of 50. So there's this saying that we have in the world that is completely misleading and wrong. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. Right. You're set in your ways. All of these things that would tend to make someone believe that by the time they get to me, that change is not possible. That right. the things that I suggest when I'm online marketing, right. that they can't do. And right. there's so many stupid people in this world who try to reinforce that, but it just drives me nuts. I love you, man. The thing I hit him with is the mindset piece, because if your mindset is fixated on I can't and it's not possible and all of that, then there's really not a lot I can do to help you because you've been convinced your entire life that boosting your key levels naturally is not possible. Losing weight is not possible. Having a better relationship is not possible, but it all is. It's right. just a matter of how you approach it. So that's what I do better than anyone, I think, is really helping people reframe the way they look at this 
And then the other parts of those five principles become a lot easier to disseminate the information that is pretty standardized as you go through that sort of thing. But the mindset piece is vital. Well, I want to, I want to stay there. I want to go deeper with you on this because, you know, one of the first things when you and I started talking about six months ago, it's crazy how fast time moves, um, is this part. Like, I, you know, I was very moved by the first time I came on your group and, you know, talked to your men um, about, you know, how deep you were into the mindset and really the mindset is spirituality, right? It's like the whole vibrational, you know, field of like, if you don't, so, so to, so to, to accentuate or accentuate or essentialize what you are saying right now is like, and this is, this is something that, you know, guys in our field, you know, that look good and, you know, wage our whole lives to have six packs and, and, you know, look good with our shirts off and stuff like that. You know, we deal with this. It's like, and my wife was really big on this, Clark, and teaching me this myself, like until you feel worthy, right, of having a six pack, of having a beautiful wife, of having an amazing life, of having, you know, revenue streams, you know, that are always coming in, obviously that require work and effort and doing the work. But until you feel worthy of having any or all of those, you will never have them. And I think you know this. So many guys in our community, especially in the bodybuilding realm, fitness realm, they got it all going on the outside, but they got nothing on the inside because they don't feel worthy. And that's why so many of them have muscle dysmorphia. They never look good enough. They're never ripped enough. They're never big enough. You know what I mean? And, and, and because it's, they don't have enough. They're mentally and spiritually like disconnected that they that they just don't have self worth and that, and that's why I love about you is that you know all of your guys that's number one like you tell them like look like you just said I, I can't help you until you feel worthy of me helping you. I want to share something with you, Jay. I just looked it up on my phone, and and it, typically it doesn't come up for whatever weird reason on my phone, but it did now, so it, this is meant to happen. So awesome. with the mindset piece, I just mentioned that I had my guys come in for what I refer to as the CB experience. They fly in from all over the place. Yep. And you actually met this guy when you came in and, and gracefully spoke to these men who they are still talking about you, by the way. His name is awesome. Keith Cobza. Keith yep. lost 100 pounds. Yep. Keith is now running ultra marathons. Nice. Keith is now talking about, I'm working on my sprinting. I'm like, guys, did you just hear what Keith said? He's talking about <laughs> this guy was admittedly hated the world, hated himself, yep. hated everything. Yep. He's got everything, but he didn't. He just didn't. So when he first came here, he was very reluctant. He's like, I have videos of this guy saying, well, you know, I didn't know what to think. I thought this was weird. I thought these guys were stupid. So I've watched him grow. And this is all mindset, people. Yep. I want you to listen to this as a skeptical human who's achieved a lot in life, but is mad at the world because he's mad at himself because he doesn't like the way he currently exists. Yep. So this year. I had my buddy Jeremy Jackson come down. He is from Baywatch. He was played Hobie Buchanan. Yep. Jeremy's been through hell, came out the other end. He's a shining bright light, and he studies breathworks meditation. Awesome. So I said, Jeremy, I want you to come and do breathworks with these guys. So I set it up. I said, look, you guys are all older. You probably think I'm some weirdo, but please trust me. Just trust me because – if, if you if you know me and you love me, you know I'm not going to do anything for you that is going to hurt you. It's only going to help you. So I turned it over. Jeremy did his thing. He got him all ready. Now, you need to understand, these guys are all over 50. They came from all around. They paid money to be here. Now I got them laying down on my deck in the backyard. It looks like Jonestown, like I was ready to pass out the drink. <laughs> but they're laying there ready to have an experience. Right. So Jeremy does the breath work. I'm walking around because I wanted to witness what was happening. I stand over Keith and I see tears coming out, tears going. I'm like, something's happening right now. And I didn't ask him afterwards. But when he got home a couple of days later, I'm going to play this for you. I want you to hear this. Okay. He played me this. Everyone pay attention. This is important. Again, I'm going to set it up. A man who hated the world, a man who was frustrated, a man who didn't trust, but he was a man who had enough trust to follow somebody who he believed could help him shed off some of the BS in life. Hold up. Oh, no. Don't do this to me. Airplane video. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to make this happen. 
I can find it on my computer, but damn it. Oh, shit. I did that great setup, Jay, and now it <laughs> It always never fails. Well, what did he actually say? Oh, God, you got to hear it from him. Let me try this one more time. Keep asking me. Let's keep this going so it doesn't slow down, but I'm going to okay. keep this. Yeah, I'm no, I mean, it up. yeah, no, no. So it's cool. Um, so, I mean, uh, mindset is everything, man. I mean, again, you know, most people don't truly feel worthy. I mean, they, you know, they, they say the right things. They do, you know, they train, they meal prep, they do all these things, but it's like, until you look in the mirror in the morning and you literally say, I'm a badass, you know, I'm, you know, blank name and I am worthy. And I am, you know, my mantra or, you know, affirmation is I am healthy, whole and complete. And I am enough. I love right? that. So if you say that and you believe that because you're saying it constantly, you know, doing mirror tests or mirror affirmations or whatever. And by the way, I, I mean, you know, my audience knows this, bro. I do it three days a week at a minimum in my shower talking to myself. And I, you know, I always tell people like, it's not myself that I'm talking to. My higher self is connecting with my physical body. And so this is, I'm creating this Jay Campbell is a badass and I am healthy, whole and complete and I am enough. And now I have created a reality where I don't need to tell other people, you know, that I'm this, that, and the other and, and, and bullshit them because I, it's, it's not a big deal. And, and once you get there, you like, you know, you're not playing the uh, imposter syndrome game anymore. It sounds weird to somebody who's not there yet. And I completely right. understand that. But when you get there, so a, a, what I do to people is I tell them, go in your bathroom mirror. There's a scripture in the Bible that says the eyes are the window to That's the right. soul. That's right. If you're able to look at your own self and your own soul and say, I love you, right. and continue to say that over and over again until you start to believe it, because right. at first you might not love yourself. You might right. not feel good. But that's right. the beginning of healing is loving yourself. I mean, we've heard it said before, how can you be lovable if you don't love yourself? That's exactly right. How can you right. expect to have a solid relationship. So this thing's not queuing up, but I'll tell you what he said. He said, Clark, I've been wanting to share this with you. I owe it to you. He said, I laid there and I felt like I was floating. And then he said, I felt like God punched me through my chest into the cement, into the core of the earth. And he reached back up and he pulled out all the shit that was inside of me and took it away. And he said, when I went to sleep last night, I felt like I slept in my mother's womb. Wow. He said, Clark, if this is what being born again feels like, it's not that crazy. Amazing. This is amazing. It was, it was absolutely, I sat here in tears when I heard that from this man, because I know his story. Yeah. I know what he struggles with. And I've watched him literally transform. And I thought to myself, if this man can do it, Everyone can. And I had my business partner on the phone this morning. He said, Clark, we got to figure out why the guys who are thriving, why they're thriving and why the guys who are not thriving, why they're not thriving. And I'm like, Danny, I love you, bro, because that is the key. If we can unlock why some people really take off with our programs and other people don't and reveal that to them, then we can help more people heal yeah. because you and I are in the business of healing. It's not about no, getting jacked. No, totally. If someone comes to me, I don't want to get you get jacked. Go go to some go to my go to Michael Hearn. He'll get you jacked. But I'm here to help you heal. That's right. You know? Are you currently suffering from a testosterone deficiency? Are you already using therapeutic testosterone? If you are, go to tottdecoded.com forward slash 10 dash questions and find out the top 10 questions you need to be asking your doctor about therapeutic testosterone. These are critical questions to ask your doctor. If they can't answer them, you need to find another doctor. Well, I mean, look, uh, you know, I want to keep going on this. Um, so everybody has trauma, bro. Right. Like we come out of the womb and it's like, you know, uh, Dr. Udu Erasmus calls the womb, the Buddha sack, right? It's like perfection. You're in your mom's, you know, uh, you know, the, the amniotic fluid and you're just like vibrating back and forth. And now granted, you know, if your mom is, you know, being beat up by some loser, you know, that can't be good for you. But at the end of the day, like, you know, it's a pleasant for most beings in the, in the womb and then boom, you come out into the earth and it's crazy. I mean, right. Like now you're being taught and told and, you know, 
you got to worship this God or, you know, go to this church or, I mean, it's insane what happens, right? Like in your first like four to six to eight years when you're literally attempting to develop as a being. Um, and that's when you face trauma. And so, you know, Clark, the people for the rest of our lives, the people that are the best adapted, and I don't mean the people that make the most money because a lot of those people are heavily traumatized, right? I'm, I'm, I'm literally saying the people that are best adapted and best adapted, in my opinion, would mean love and trust themselves are spending a majority of their adult life healing. You know, again, doing these positive affirmations. Yeah, of course, me and you. I mean, bro, I was, I hated myself until I was probably 40, 41 or 42. Now, I mean, I didn't look like that guy on the external, but I was chasing money and living in the ego mind and, you know, stacking chips and, you know, doing all this bullshit, you know, living in the corporate scam, you know, wage slave mindset you know, not even an entrepreneur. And, 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 but, you know, again, I look now without defining it negatively, I look back on it as all of it was a blessing yeah. because the truth is, as you know, the more contrast, the more quote unquote difficult things are, the better you evolve and, and grow your soul. And that's the whole real purpose as a human being. Why all of us are here is to literally evolve and grow our soul. Yeah. It's nice to have a six pack on your meat suit, but that's not the ultimate game, right? The ultimate game is like to give and receive love, which allows you to evolve and grow your soul. And so many people get caught up in this, but dude, it's true. I would tell you right now that the people that are not successful that it versus the people that are for you are the ones that are just so traumatized that they literally cannot see, you know, through the, 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 the you know, the, what do you call it? The, uh, the forest through the trees yet. And everybody, by the way, is walking the same path, bro. We're all attempting to heal. But some of us are figuring it out and healing faster than others. And I always say no rate of speed is better than another. We're all walking the same path. Well, I heard this the other day. I was in a business coaching deal and someone asked, why, you know, why is it so hard to build a business, right? So if we look at it like building a business and trying to grow in our life spiritually or emotionally, relationally, financially, whatever, this guy gave the greatest example. He said, you know, he drew a line like this. Everyone expects their business to go this way. But the reality, as you and I know, and you build a business, it's like this, you know. But ultimately, it still is on an upward trajectory overall. Oh, that's right. In our, in our growth is the same way. And this is what he said at the end. And it meant enough to me to do a Reels video of it. And it's consistency is progress. That's right. Period. That's, Period. that's it. That's it. If you show up every day and you do your emotional work, you're showing making up. progress, whether or not you're curled up in the shower today or not. That's right. In a ball crying, because that's part of the work and part of the progress. You needed to get rid of that stuff. Yeah. It was meant to come out in that moment. You're in that shower. You're safe. You're curled up. You're naked and you're crying like the, the womb. So when you mentioned the womb, I thought about how impactful that guy's statement was. I felt like I was in my mother's womb. That's what right. did that man experience? Exactly. Just from breathing, bro. All he was doing was breathing. No plant medicine, no yeah. nothing. We got all of it in us. We just got to learn to unlock it. Totally. Oh, we're getting fired up now, man. We no, that's like amazing. It's, total, it's totally true, dude. Everything, the way out is within. You know, there's yeah. so many deceptions and cons and scams in, 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 you know, modern day society, especially now with technology, as you and I were talking off the air about, you know, how dumbed down the population is. You already said it. I mean, the, the reality is, is like when you do these internal, let's call it internal work, you know, contemplation, meditation, introspection, sitting in nature, sitting in stillness, breath work, you know, all these things. And you do it, as you just said, the key, you know, I like, uh, you know, what's his name? Um, I forget the guys wrote the book. The, who's the guy that wrote the compound effect? It doesn't matter. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, the key is what that guy said. It's consistency over time. So it's like you said, it's every single day doing the work. Now, how do you do the work every single day? And now this is a very simple thing, but as you said, bro, very few people do it. I mean, again, it's the Pareto principle probably divided in half. It's like 10%, right? The Pareto is 80, 20, but it's really 10 because it's half of the people that are still, you know, quote unquote successful to do this. How easy is it though now with technology to program your calendar to put in notifications when you're attempting to do the work, right? Like meditate here, say a prayer here, have an affirmation here, read this poetry here. I mean, I have all of that, 
you know, again, and I'm not better than anybody else, but I have all that in my phone. I've had that programmed in my phone for seven years when I chose to change my life, change the direction of my life to begin to do this work. And I don't, and, and I know you're the same, but you, we don't do it every time, bro. We know we get a notification and we're busy. Life is in the way. And we're like, oh, opt out and you don't even do it. But as long as it's there and you make a focused, conscientious effort every day to do some of it. And I will tell you this, bro, right now, every day, no matter what, I do my meditative work. It doesn't matter whether it's five minutes or 40. And again, sometimes it's 15. Sometimes it's three. It's never less than five usually now, but it's sometimes it's barely at all. But I mean, you can go into my health app and you can see the consistency of the last four years of what I have been doing. And like you said, over time, it compounds. So what happens then is, yes. and what I've noticed now in my life with the meditation and this, just getting away from the noise really is what it is. Yeah. Is when, when you get consistent with it and you're making progress, and then on the days that you don't, you crave it more than you did totally, when you dude. were trying to create the habit. Totally. So totally. when you finally get that switch, like a teeter totter, you're here and you're, uh, 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 you know, you got the fat kid on the other side that's holding you up in the air, and yeah. you're finally getting over, and it's like, yeah. oh, now you're on that other side. So let's talk about the cold plunge for a minute, and, and we had. I was just going to bring that up, dude. That's how connected we are right now because I was doing that at the mastermind with Mike and those guys two weeks ago when I was up. In well, I want to talk about that too. That, I wish I was. I didn't know you were going, bro. I would have went. Oh man, I'm sorry. I mean, I literally was like a last second thing. I didn't know if I was going to be able to go. I, my life has been in absolute chaos in the last three weeks once we decided to sell the house and you know move. I won't say it. <laughs> but listen, man, this cold plunge. I am now have a pre predictable outcome in that cold plunge. So what I do is I fill up my bathtub. So I wake up between some days, three thirty four, between three thirty and four thirty, depending. And I'll come in, I'll fill up the bathtub with hot water. I'll get a meditation in my headphones and I'll yep. get a meditation queued up while the bathtub is filling up. I walk out, I go right into the cold plunge and I lay there for four minutes and I just breathe. Yep. Come back into my bathtub, put my headphone on. I'll do a 10 minute guided meditation on whatever affirmations or get your day right or get over fear and anxiety is what I was doing the other day. Yep. Then when I get in that space and I go back in the cold plunge, 100% of the time, I feel some sort of detachment from my physical body with my energetic body. Yep. And the other day was whoa, 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 white space. And I'm like, okay, how far do I want to take this? Because when you realize what's happening, it can be scary. It can be intimidating. Yeah, of course, man, you leave your body. And because it's not always like this super great feeling. It's one yeah. of, oh shoot, what's about to happen here? Yeah. So I went, I went a little bit deeper than normal. And then I'm like, I got to come out. And when I opened my eyes, this is just yesterday morning. The whole world was like, it was heat waves yeah. wobbling. The sky was wobbling. I'm like, oh, man. So I'm like, I'm going to roll with this. So I get out, butt naked, 4.30 in the morning. I just got my hands up. I'm like, yes, let's go. I come back. I get in the hot tub again. It's a different feeling of this yeah. just humming. Yeah. So with my, with my cold plunge, what I've learned to do is there's a filter that goes all the time. My head is on the back. And because of the noise the filter makes, I can, um, yeah. it's the same tone as the filter. Yep. And it vibrates the back of my head, bro. I found a system that works for me that starts the intention, starts the direction of my day, which beats the hell out of watching the news. I'll just put it that much. <laughs> you know? so, so, you know, it's interesting that you said the hum. So, uh, so I've talked about this too. So I, and, 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 and uh, I think anyone who has experienced five MEO, not ayahuasca, but five MEO, which is, you know, Bufo, the frog oh, has yeah. experienced that because it's like I said, like it literally takes you to the mothership. And when you're in the mothership and again, I'm, you know, I'm not going full blown woo woo. You're, you're, you're talk, it is a vibratory tone it is the source field is an energy and a frequency it is a harmonic wave that you sense it's so bizarre it's so difficult to to explain but that hum is creation force 
And so when you're in creation force, and you already said it, your energetic body, your etheric body, your energy field, you're, you know, you're, you're, let's, let's put it this way. You're a vibrating plasmatic discharge. You are not in your six pack meat suit and you're out around the physical body. And like you say, you feel yourself as like a vibrating humming energy being. You're like an energy being. That's what you are, bro. I wish that people who didn't really truly understand what we're saying, (laughs) my hope, my hope is that people don't discount this as two yeah. weirdos talking about some stuff that's Definitely not, not. Cool, when the reality is there's a bunch of weirdos who don't believe that what we're saying is possible. And yeah. I'm not being like, I'm better, you're worse. Like right. you said, it's right. like, no, right. that's not the case at all. It's that the trauma that I've experienced has led me to this place in my life where that's I'm right. now like, okay, this is cool. Yeah. I would rather be living in this space than the trauma prisoner that i was before 100 you know, i'm still there and and but i'm working through mine and this is the the protocol i found that is enlightening you know i, I mean it's amazing i mean and, and you said it best you know you don't need any kind of plant medicine you don't need you know hallucinogens you don't need it i mean i'm not gonna you know cast shade on anybody using those you know i know a lot of people use you know therapeutic ketamine and uh psilocybin and stuff i mean i don't uh I mean, I'm not against the use of any of those agents. You know, I think MDMA for people that have had severe PTSD uh, or severe, you know, uh, what is it? Uh, DME, you know, the brain, you know, I mean, dude, did you read yesterday? Joe Burrow says he doesn't even remember games. Think about that. You know, you're friends with Brad Johnson. I always see you guys on uh, Instagram. I mean, you know, does Brad have the same thing? I mean, these guys are gladiators, bro. I mean, when I read that about Joe Burrow, he's 25. That's horrifying. He doesn't even remember games. And but remember, he got sacked 70 plus times last year and already close to 20 this year. So, I mean, dude, these guys are literally dedicating their bodies. Uh, you know, they're basically pieces of meat. You know, thankfully now they're getting paid, right? Because back in the old days, I mean, I just saw this the other day, dude. Pete Rose made hundred thousand dollars in his first six years of playing major league baseball pete rose think about that but the reality is is that you know not to rabbit hole but to go back to what you were saying is like bro we're not crazy there's a lot of people that have been able to do this you know through breath work uh you know through saromatic or sovomatic uh meditation i mean there's so many ways to access the energy field and and again look through curly and photography uh, through the, this new technologies, the Russia, there's all these coherence technologies out there now that can actually read and see the energy field. This is not woo woo, dude. We are energy. We're not these physical bodies. We're our energy, our soul, our spirit is inhabiting these physical bodies, but this is not the be all end all. So the truth is, bro, it's like you have to, meaning every one of you guys watching the Clark's dudes, my people, you have to get to a place of awareness that you are not your body. You're so I much wrote, more than your body. I, I wrote, I have a, my first book that I wrote was called Spiritually Fit. Yep. And one of the chapters says, it's, you're not who you are because of your body. You're who you are because of your spirit, which could be right. defined as energy field. That's right. So let, let me give this very simple analogy to someone who's watching that might not be resonating with what we're talking about. That's the right word, by the way, resonating. You have a beautiful little baby in your hand, right? And we're looking at this beautiful little baby. And the words that are coming out of your mouth don't match the energy that you're projecting because this baby doesn't understand your words. And you might say something like, oh, my God, you're the ugliest little baby I've ever seen. Why are you so ugly? Oh, I just want to bite your head off. You know, stuff that we say to babies that they are smiling because they're feeling the energy that's emanating from you onto them and affecting them on a cellular level, causing that vibration to happen when the words don't match with the energy. So when you're with someone, you're like, bro, just match my energy. We'll be fine. Your spouse, your coworkers, anyone else. That's why it's like, ooh, uh, I don't know what it is about them. (laughs) I'll tell you what it is. It's their energy. Are you using therapeutic peptides? Are you a new user? Maybe an advanced user? Maybe you're considering starting peptides. Highly recommend going to the link right below the peptidescourse.com forward slash 10 dash mistakes and download my PDF and learn what 
not to do before starting therapeutic peptides. Bro, 100%. And you know, it's funny that you talk about babies. Um, they're sieves, man. They, they like, I mean, it'd be funny. Like, we, we have to be careful when two people like you and I get together in a room because the frequency, the amplitude is going to go so far up. Like, people that are not vibrating, like where you and I are vibrating, are going to be like, oh, you know, yeah. they're repelled. I mean, you know that. I mean, your whole life, before probably you even understood energy and frequency and stuff like that, you know, you would like, some people would love you and other people would just hate you. And you never understood because you're the nicest guy. You're like me too, but it's like, it's all vibration. This is literally energy and frequency and resonance begets coherence and dissonance begets incoherence. So when you take two resonant, crazy, high energy, woo woo nut jobs like me and you, and you put us in a room with a bunch of people vibrating in dissonance, they are going to be repelled. Our energy is literally like slapping them in the face because they're vibrating way slower. And this is not talking shit. No. This is this is energy. This is how it works. Like, I'll give you another story. And this is really good for people to understand. Um, you have an amazing meditation. You just did your float tank and your ice bath and your hot bath, and you left your body and you're in utter Zen peace and you are driving somewhere at seven 30 in the morning to go meet somebody and you're on the freeway, you're on, let's say the 15 and some complete insane person cuts you off on the freeway, bro. Like almost kills you. Right. So you go from this Zen state to this, like, Oh, you know, rip the steering wheel. You know, if you're not in total control, of your emotions, you're like, what the fuck? You know, you're screaming all this stuff. If you choose and you can, and I'm sure you have probably at the past, I mean, I'm learning to do this now, um, to literally be like, wow, you must be having a bad day and wave at that person. And again, not react. You're responding, react out of fear, or respond out of love. You're responding out of love saying, wow, you must be having a bad day. I send you love. People don't understand this, but this is a fact. This is quantum physics in action. You just sent a resonant energy a coherent energy wave to a person in fear, total fear and dissonance. And the energy of coherence transmutes the energy of dissonance. And so what happens is, and this is how people can understand this, because again, we sound like two woo-woos. That person who's mad and cut you off, who wants to fight, is now looking at you as like, huh? That guy just said he wishes me happiness or love or whatever, and I just tried to kill him on the freeway. Because that energy field transmuted his negative, dissonant, incoherent frequency. And people don't understand this, but it really is true. So the moral of what I'm saying is, bro, if you walk around positive, affirming, exuberant, charismatic, like both you and I do, most of the time, that's all you're going to attract. You're not going to attract the lower vibrating dissonant people. Yes, you can have random occurrences on the freeway like that. And that's why I brought that story up, but it's all energy and frequency. Your vibe attracts your tribe. That's what it is. It's vibration. It's not, people just don't understand the terminology because they use things so loosely, you know, vibe attracts your tribe. It's your vibration attracts the people into your frequency. That's how yeah, it is. And people will discount the language too. So if you take, We'll say uh, a spiritual, or a Christian community. Uh, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> you take a bunch of Christians in a church and you come in here and you talk about energy, vibration and dissonance and all of these words. You guys that, are witches. Right. And, 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 and there's a direct correlation to scripture and all of that. It's just totally. the words that are chosen. So people will put a wall up and look again. No offense to anyone who has that, but right. the, the, the overarching desire here for both Jay and I is, look, let's not separate ourselves by language. Right. All we're trying to do is, is share love. So to break That's down right. what you just said with dissonance or the positive overcoming the negative, yep. it's like light overcomes darkness. That's right. 100% of the time, you flip the damn switch and it's the darkness is gone. That's right. And anytime you want to diffuse a situation, don't engage in the same energy as that other person. It's yeah. like, you know what? I never really thought of it that way. Thank you for telling me that. I appreciate it. I'll think about that. They, you disarm them. That's they totally. have nothing to come back at you with. That's so if totally you want to start true. your process in healing, don't engage in their negative emotion. Rise above it. 
Well, it's amazing. Uh, one last thing, and then we'll get to your other points here. This is an amazing podcast, man. So profound. I'm glad we waited. It was the right day. It was yeah. perfect. Uh, another story or, or, or an analogy that people can use about what we're talking about that's very simple. And this was taught to me when I was literally 13 years old by a 17-year-old guy that I looked up to, which is still mind-blowing that he was actually – I mean, obviously, somebody taught him this, but he's like – he was teaching me the laws of energy, but not in that way. He was like, look, man, love can overcome fear in any capacity all the time, no matter what. I want you to I, – I want you to – you know, I'll, let me test this for you. You can walk up to the biggest – meanest most menacing like gangster tattoo prison inmate looking dude doesn't matter there's you know skin color but let's just say just giant beast mode looking dude who looks like he's a you know a menace and you walk up to him and you look him right in the eyes and you shake his hand and with 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 you know exuberance and you say hey man it's so nice to meet you are you having a good day or i'm having a great day how are you and it doesn't matter how negative they are you just put a shockwave of resonance and coherence into that person. And every time Clark, they're going to look back at you, shake your hand and say, man, I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. Because you uh, just I've, transmuted them. Yeah. I've lived that. I've been in more prisons than I can even tell you. And I I've lived that. It's just yes. people. It doesn't matter where you find them. You could find them in the boardroom or right. on, on death row. That's they're, right. they're just a human who wants to be appreciated, respected, okay. loved, and treated with kindness. It's, yeah. it's pretty simple stuff. But once again, we segment people into populations of, oh, that guy's in prison. They don't, you know, it's like, no, they deserve it as much as anyone else. The majority of those guys are in there. They just made dumb mistakes that they got caught for and, and we did, yeah. <laughs> you know. That's exactly right, dude. I always say the same thing, literally like, you know, the difference between a, you know, a, a guy in prison and, and an attorney with a fountain pen is luck. Yeah. You know, imprecise timing. Amazing, bro. Okay. So you've got a couple other stuff in here I, I want to go through. I know you said, you know, the, the number one is the biggest one, but like we have meals, movement, community, and integrity. You know, feel free to break down each one or one before the other. I don't care. Yeah. So I have been in that order for specific, specifically for a reason because, you know, we're not shy of experts in this world yeah. who say, this is the way to diet. That's the way to diet. What I'm right. telling people is sustainable. Keto or carnivore, bro? Which one yeah. is going to be? You know, and, and everything is bullshit. You can't eat this. You can't eat that. I'm just like in shock. I'm never eating raw liver all day long. I'm not doing this stuff. But what I teach my guys is once you get your mindset, whatever meal plan works for you, you're going to stick with it. And it becomes a lifestyle, not a 12-week deal. And that goes with the workouts as well. If you do compound exercises or full body or you train twice a week yep. or body parts, whatever you do, whatever we find that fits your schedule in your lifestyle, and we don't have to adapt your lifestyle to the right. program, we adapt the program to your lifestyle. That's right. Now we're creating sustainable change. But then we get into the community piece, which I know for sure is one of the most vital pieces because yep. all of this energy we spoke of, when you have a collective and a group or a tribe of like-minded people locked arm in arm moving in the same direction, it becomes hard to stop that group of people. And when someone gets weak, which we all do, myself included, when you're locked arm in arm, these people are dragging you along. So what I witness in my community is men lifting men up and helping them maximize their life in every aspect, calling them on their bullshit, finding them when they disappear. It happens every day in my group. Joe, where are you at? Oh, I had a car accident. Well, you need us now more than ever. Joe, Tom, where are you at? Oh, I had a fight with my girlfriend. So why aren't you in here? You know, if we're really being friend like that. And then we go to the integrity piece and it comes down to a lot. It used to be supplementation, but I put that into the meals because that's all it really is. Yeah. And then the integrity is your integrity and in reporting to me what you're doing. If you're being honest, I can help you. If you're lying, I can. Right. Being, having integrity in your life, because if you're doing shit that is causing you to feel bad about yourself and you're compromising your integrity, that has to manifest somewhere. And it usually does in our physical appearance. Totally. We look older. We feel older. We act older. It manifests in fat and skin problems and totally. fibromyalgia and, yeah. and things like this that could be circumvented if we had integrity 
and having somebody in our life that we could go to and say, man, this is what I've been doing, or I've been lying to you about my program. So when these men do these five principles at a seven or above, I give them a scale of one to 10, and they report to me every day with a text message, seven, seven, eight, nine, seven. Good job, Jay. Way to go. I don't need to tell you anything. Talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Four. Okay. Hold up. What do we got to do to get your mindset back on track today? Yeah. Don't worry about yesterday. What do we have to do now? And I get it back on track, and that's it. It's beautiful, man. So, you know, it, well, it, it goes back to, though, again, worthiness. You know, like you said, like a lack of love and trust of self does, you know, show up in physicality. I mean, the, the truth is I, I read I read a book recently. I don't remember. I read so many spiritual books now, but like they were saying that people that die of cancer or some sort of horrible disease of aging, you know, they have someone to forgive. And I started thinking about that and I was like, oh my God, I started thinking about all the people in my life that were close to me that I know that died of cancer. And did they have a traumatic event? Did they have something, you know, and, and, and by the way, and I don't, again, I'm not, you know, categorizing or condemning or condoning or anything. I'm just saying that this happens a lot in women because women will have relationships that break up. I mean, dude, even in divorces. A lot of women, because they're very emotional, right? We know that they're very, you know, they're not like, they're not driven by the left brain. They're mostly driven by the right brain, the creative, you know, they're the creative force. Women are the creative force of, of beings. Um, they get stuck in something happening to them that they can't forgive. And then that for lack of forgiveness literally creates some sort of internal, you know, manifestation of lack of love and trust or whatever it is. You know, it's usually lack of trust. And then that creates cancer, bro, or it creates, you know, sometimes it's even mental or neurodegenerative disease. But dude, if you, you know, this book was saying that like, as long as you have no one to forgive and you are not, you know, living your life without being able to forgive, you will never die of a disease of aging or one of those horrible diseases. And I'm telling you, dude, it is really true. It absolutely is true. Yeah, even if you don't get cancer or something like that from holding on to this negative energy, you're going to age faster, period. 100%. In, in one of my favorite books, As a Man Thinketh by James yep. Allen, of it course. talks about that. It gives a comparison of the kind-hearted, light-hearted person who aged gracefully compared right. to the one who held on to all this, who had the lines marred in their face and, and uh, you know, multiple of the age that they were. It's It just... This is probably one of the best books that anyone could read. I've read That's this. It's literally an amazing book. I have it myself right here. I don't know where it is right now because my books are all out of order because I'm disordered right now, but uh, I have it too, bro. It's an amazing, it's a phenomenal book, man. Um, I mean, bro, we have so much in common. It's so crazy. Um, I mean, there's so much more I could talk to you about, but you know, we're right at 51 minutes. I mean, you know, let me just give you the opportunity to, you know, summarize this. And then of course we'll let you promote maximize man elite, but um where are you right now, you know, from a standpoint of like, where do you see, you know, give me your prediction, you know, and I know it's an opinion question, but you know, where do you see, where are we going as a society uh, in the next, say three to five to 10 years? You know, are we building still the golden age? Will we, people like us create the new earth? You know, what, wh where is this going to go? Yeah. So in, in fitness, we always talk about macro and micro nutrients. Yep. So I like to go from the macro to the micro. Instead of focusing on the macro and things that I can't control as much, I want to go into the micro of my world and think about all of what we just spoke about and have my effect on the world be as positive of an experience it can be to the people that are in my circle of influence. And going back to your original question about social media and where the world's going and magazines, we all have influence that is growing because of the world that we live in. Yeah. So the question I ask myself on a daily basis is, especially when I don't want to do my meditation or I'm in my bitch ass dude mode, which I get there. Of course. Who do I want to be to my circle? Do I want to be the positive influence that can affect positive change in the micro and not get so caught up in the macro? Because that's where I think many of us go wrong is 
It's, it's like me telling one of my guys, don't project 12 weeks down the road. Focus on today. Like this is the only thing that exists in our life, Jay, is me and you right now. We don't have a wife. Right. We don't have kids. We got nothing but this. That's right. So if we can distill our world down without it getting out there too far, I think if more people could do that, then the overall macro would become a better situation as a whole. One of my businessmen, matter of fact, everybody that knows me tells me this in business. Clark, you're always waiting on somebody else. You're waiting on that relationship or that thing that's going to help you get to the next level where you know you should be. When are you going to rely on yourself to do that? And that's a hard pill to swallow. And it's like, damn, Tony Grebmeyer from, from Ship Offers yesterday. I know Tony. I know Tony. Yeah, Tony told me that yesterday. He's one of my biggest fans. He goes, but you're like me, Clark. You're always waiting for something else. You need to get to work today. What did you do today, bro? And he's telling me this in love. That's I'm awesome. like, all right, okay. So that's really, Jay, to bring that back down to what I can control, that's all that really matters to me. So as far as my world and my yeah. economics and my future and all of that, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will be glad and rejoice in it. And when we're done here, I'm going to move on to the next thing with the same energy that I have yep. right now. That's awesome, man. That's an amazing answer. That's way, way beyond what I expected. I mean, I, I will just say to wrap up and sum up this podcast, let me put your, um, your company, MaximizeManElite.com, um, and I'll talk about that in a second. But uh, I'm in 100% agreement with you. I am always been a glass half full guy. Uh, I am creating, as are you, a golden age. It's coming. It might not be in this lifetime. It might be in the next, but you're right. I mean, all we have is the precious present. Yesterday is gone and tomorrow hasn't happened. So focusing your energy or your preoccupied, you know, your mind, your preoccupation with your mind on either of those two places is an absolute waste of your life. It's a waste of your energy. It's a waste of your resources. So just live in the precious present as often as you can. And yes, you're right. You're going to have moments your, your, your ego, your reptilian consciousness is going to take a hold of you because again, it's, it's designed to keep you in survival. And there's going to be times you have in your life where you're like, Whoa, you know, and it, it, it's, it's about rating the ego in it. You know, you need the ego. It's not suppressing the ego. The ego is not the enemy, but it's harnessing the reptilian consciousness or left brain, the ego, whatever you want to call it. And then thinking about, or coming from that heart center, right? The heart center, what I call the cosmic awareness, which is everything. It's, it's the higher self. It's the experience of like, Hey, if I can connect with my higher self, you know, the God inside me, the divinity inside me, and I allow that to lead me, then I'm never going to really make any bad decisions. And even if quote unquote, I, or you, or anybody watching the show defines it as a bad decision, it's really not right. I'll, I'll leave us with this. Like, you know, Dr. Hawkins, great statement is, and this is so difficult to, for most people to accept initially, but everything is happening exactly as it's divinely intended, always and in all ways. So when you think of that statement and how profound it is, if you deny that, then you're just in resistance to it. Because the universe is going to keep on keeping on. <laughs> yeah, right? without us, man. There's a D on that maximized, by the way. It's maximized. Oh, my bad. Let me uh, change that. So I apologize. You said I was going to take my shirt off somewhere in the podcast. I got <laughs> there we go. Let's go. <sighs> Dude, you are literally a legend here. Let me put that back up there so it's right. MaximizedManElite.com. Um, when, when is your next photo shoot or when is that happening? It's. It, I think on the 11th, I'm going to shoot with Michael Nevue. I just got off the phone with him and then Jason Ellis. So I just need to get a little bit of a tan and we'll go out. We'll have fun. <laughs> I love it, dude. Even at 59, you're still living strong. Bro, I love you, man. Thank you so much for coming on the show. So you guys and gals that watch the Jay Campbell podcast, if you are a 50-year-old man uh, or older and you are looking to have one of the most amazing, powerful, uh, you know, spiritually motivating humans on the planet coach you, this is the guy. Go to MaximizedManElite.com. And again, remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see everybody very soon.